I was playing around with this circuit. Um, I've showed it before. This is a, um, these are Schmidt triggers. I guess I should put in the little Schmidt trigger sign. Uh, these are 74 HC 14s. Uh, these are those Chinese fakes of the, what were they? I bought the 4106s, I think they were, and they ended up being 74 HC14s, but I figured I could use those anywhere, so let's hook one up. Um, one big resistor with a capacitor, so this should turn into an oscillator, right? Uh, input goes to output, and then the uh, capacitor slows it down, so you get a charge up, charge down, charge up, charge down, turns into an oscillator, right? And we can see, yeah, it's, uh, it's an oscillator. So uh, let's take a look at the circuit that I have here and some fun facts. So here's my little circuit. And so I said it was a one meg resistor, but I didn't say what the capacitor was. It's uh, 120 picofarads. Uh, so 120 picofarads gives us 6.2 kilohertz, all right? 6.2 kilohertz. So uh, one of the fun things we can do is we can heat up the capacitor and capacitors have a temperature coefficient. So I'm gonna take my soldering iron and I'm gonna bring it near, within a couple millimeters of the, uh, I'm not gonna to touch it, but I'll be, I'll be within a couple of millimeters of the uh, capacitor, so let me move it in. And I think we can see that the uh, frequency is changing. That's due to the, uh, the heating of the, uh, I'll take off the heat now. Let's do the heating of the uh, ceramic material. It expands and contracts. Um, so that was, uh, that was fun. And then I started thinking about, well, what other things have capacitance that changes? And I thought, oh, okay, well, let me see. Uh, you can use diodes as varactor sometimes and stuff. So I just kind of happened to grab a diode here. This is just a uh, 1N4148. One end, one end and I just, uh, just kind of stuck that on there. And uh, we will come back up here, and oh, it's going real, real fast. So it's a very small capacitance, right? And so it's oscillating here at about 10.6. And um, I'm gonna make it vary. Okay, I'm gonna put my, okay, so it went down, and I wasn't putting my soldering iron next to it. What I was doing was putting my hand over it. That's all I was doing, putting my hand over it. I was blocking the light. Okay, now I've showed this before too, uh, that uh, these diodes uh, are in a clear package and they see light and yeah, light's not good on diodes. And if you touch them, of course, that's bad too. But now this is a light effect. So if I bring my flashlight, I'll shine a flashlight on it and uh, I can get it to, I can get it changed quite a bit with the, uh, with the flashlight. Uh, let's see, make a zoom out, kind of show, I can't show it all at the same time, but I'm, I'm shining the flashlight on it and I'm getting the, uh, I'm getting the, uh, I'm getting the waveform to change because of the light. Okay. And I thought, okay, well, that's cool. Uh, let's see what, what else, what else does it? Oh, well, uh, there's diodes that are made to detect light. So let's put one of those in there. Okay. So this is a, a uh, photodiode on a little header pin here, so it's easy to play with breadboards and stuff. So I went ahead and put that put that in here. I'll show you a picture here. Uh, it's just a little uh, two-liter diode in a fancy little can. Um, and uh, let's see here, let's go back up. And we have about eight kilohertz, but we can't see it. So let me, let me zoom out and look at that. Whoa, look at that. What, what, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? All right, so let me move the camera here so you can see the whole effect. All right, I've got it all in one shot now. So you can see the waveform kind of going crazy there. And I put my hand over it and it quiets down, okay? Well, what it's seeing is it's seeing the room lights flicker at 120 hertz and changing the capacitance of the photodiode because of the light hitting it. Um, and so, yeah, I can put my hand just barely over it and it wiggles a little bit. Change my hand, move my hand away. It's wiggling a lot. That's really cool. I have never seen that before. So anyway, I, I don't exactly know what you would do with this. It might be a fun effect for um, synthesizers. Uh, I don't know what that sounds like, bouncing up and down, bouncing up and down. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's kind of like a f FM modulation, I guess. Yeah, uh, pretty cool.
<laughs> anyway, um, and then we'll do one last one, uh, which is kind of weird. I figured, okay, well, uh, LEDs kind of act as um, as photodiodes, so we will put a uh, we will put an LED in there, and uh, okay, it is oscillating at a particular, and then I'll put my hand over that, oh, and it. Boom, and I've taken my hand away, but it stayed. Now it's at four megahertz. Oh, there we go. Now it's at 277 kilohertz. So it's got like a bimodal thing. I don't know if we're breaking, breaking down a particular PN junction, and then once it's broken down, it just stays there. But if I kind of put my hand over it, it just, no, no it's not gonna do it. So if I take a flashlight, shine my flashlight on it, there it goes, breaks into oscillation. So. Once you get it going, it stays going. Uh, I don't, and you can see that I'm. Can you, can you see that? I'm going to shine the. Uh, oops. I'm going to shine the uh, flashlight on. I'm wiggling the flashlight so it kind of wiggles the uh, wiggles the signal. So again, it's acting as a weird, a weird thing, and it's kind of this weird bimodal thing too. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So I can kind of touch it and get it to go slow again. And then if I shine the light on it, it will bang. It, it breaks, into, breaks into high oscillation. So anyway, uh, just kind of some interesting things. And it's a super simple, dirt cheap circuit. I'm just changing, uh, changing these things, putting different things in the, uh, in the path here.